Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Lisette Lindahl, and I am the Swedish Consul General in Shanghai. I'm very honored, of course, to be here today representing Sweden. The Swedish government has, since 2014, pursued a feminist foreign policy. And we were the first country in the world to have a feminist government. Today, I hope to explain how Sweden has worked with enhancing gender equality in many areas, like working life, parental leave, and breaking gender norms. I'll also try to relate to our work here in Shanghai. These pictures show how parental leave in Sweden can look like. If you notice, the pictures are all showing dads taking care of one or several children. These pictures were all taken in Sweden and show something that I think Sweden has been quite well known for, Daddy Month. In 2017, our consulate here in Shanghai displayed an exhibit called Dads. The pictures presented here were taken by a Swedish photographer, Johan Bevman. Johan got this idea for the exhibition when he was a stay-at-home dad with his son. He read a study that had examined which person children turned to when they were seeking comfort. In first place comes the mother. Not until in fifth place comes the father. And even before they go to the father, they turn to no one. And I want to just share a personal experience. When my firstborn son grew up, he, when he needed comfort, would look around and see if I or his father was closest, and he would run to the closest parent. Either we had done something right or he was a really smart child. Johan wanted to show the beauty of parental leave, to encourage dad parental leave equally with the mother and how it would benefit both the father and the child. Sweden has in total 480 days of parental leave. And out of those 18 months, three months are guaranteed to each parent. The rest they can split equally or however they prefer. Even though Sweden, in parents in Sweden has the choice of taking out the parental leave equally, only about 14% of parents share it 50-50. Sweden is one of the pioneers when it comes to gender equality, and I am very proud to present that. However, the way to equal opportunities has a long history behind it, and still a lot in the future to improve. The Swedish government has, over the years, introduced new policies to enhance gender equality and encourage both parents to stay at home with their children. Some of the most important milestones throughout history is 1955, maternal leave was introduced. In the beginning, parental leave was only given to mothers, and it was introduced already in 1955. The maternal leave meant that mothers was allowed to stay home with their child for 90 days with payment. Then later on in the 70s, Sweden introduced several reforms to help increase women's participation in the workforce. A lot of new policies were tried to enable and encourage women to work. This included, in 1971, a separate income taxation the previous taxation system meant that the taxation was shared by spouses, having the effect that the one who ha had the highest income, usually the husband, paid less taxes, and the one with the lower income, usually the woman, paid higher tax. The total income of the family benefited when the man continued working and the woman stayed at home. Separate taxes encouraged women to participate more freely in the workforce without it becoming an economic issue for the family. 
1974, the non-gender specific parental leave. Another important policy that was introduced was the gender neutral parental leave, which gave fathers equal rights to take out the leave. However, there was a very small part of fathers that used this opportunity still today. The mothers are taking out the largest part of the 480 days of parental leave. And then during the 70s to 75s, the developing of the daycare center. That is another very important aspect for making it possible for women to participate in the work phase, work, workforce. And that is improvement of the daycare system. If the family has somewhere safe and then with good environment to leave the children for the day, there was an alternative to stay home and take care of the children or be a housewife. These policies were introduced over 40 years ago, but have all shaped Sweden into the welfare state it is today. The rate of working women in Sweden is 80.4%, according to Eurostat. In China, the woman's role in the labor force has been declining since the 1990s. According to equality organization Catalyst, economic reforms in China have led to a setback for women, together with the resurgence of more traditional stereotypes. Men in Sweden today take nearly a quarter of all parental leave. Sweden pursues gender equality policies in all aspects of our work, home and abroad. But it is important to remember the history behind why Sweden is today one of the countries in the world with the most enhanced gender equality. Another important aspect in Swedish society since the 1990s is gender mainstreaming. Gender mainstreaming involves a gender equality perspective being included in all policies that affect people's conditions, so that all women and men, boys and girls, can live equal lives. This has influenced our work here in Shanghai. We try to relate to that gender equality is non-negotiable. Since 2014, we have done several projects that we hope have brought some of our Swedish ideas on gender to Shanghai. One of the most important and successful one is the DAD project that I mentioned earlier. I think the key to the success is that it was made a Sino-Swedish project, where we did not only present the pictures from the original Swedish exhibition, in fact, People from all over China had the opportunity to send pictures to us where fathers served as a role model to their children and showing the important bound between fathers, daughters, and sons. We received around 15,000 photos from around 3,000 families in China. We selected 25 finalists to be shown alongside the 25 Swedish dad's photos in the exhibition Baba at various public areas in Shanghai, including People's Square metro station, as you know, the biggest station in Shanghai, at Ikea Beikai store, and at the Swedish National Day event in 2017. Here you can see some of the incredible photos from the exhibition showing how the bond between father and children is just as important and strong as the one between mothers and children. Most recently, we organized another norm-breaking project in Shanghai. This was also a sinus Swedish photo exhibition where we wanted to break gender stereotypes and celebrate the diversity between people. Our project is called beyond the norm, images that change the world. The exhibition is composed of two parts. The original Swedish part provided by the Swedish Institute and created by the Swedish gender photographer Thomas Gunnarsson, and then a Chinese part created in Shanghai. 
these images intend to challenge and push norms in terms of gender, ethnicity, disability, sexual orientation, and age. Today, we're happy to see this exhibition being set up here in Sijiu Park. So please, when you have time, go try and see it. Sweden and Swedish companies work a lot with gender equality in terms of corporate social responsibility. I want to emphasize the role that companies play in terms of responsibilities and possibilities to support the development of gender equality and women's economic empowerment, both in China and Sweden. And if we work together, of course, it'll go faster. Another very important aspect that the Swedish Feminist Foreign Policy put emphasis on is political and economic representation. Since Sweden introduced equal political rights for women and men exactly 100 years ago this year, it took quite a lot longer until the political representation reflected the reality of society. It is only in the last two decades Sweden has had almost close to equal representation between women and men as members of parliament. Since the previous election last year, women have 46 of the seats in parliament, which puts Sweden as one of the top countries in the world when it comes to gender representation in parliament. As an example, only 10% of the 200 plus members of the Communist Party Central Committee in China are women. In this aspect, Sweden is setting a good example for representation of women in the political sphere. But there are yet many areas in Sweden where women are underrepresented due to old gender norms. When we look at higher positions, they are still male dominated. For example, directors of the board or chief executives in private companies in Sweden. Only 7% of these positions are held by women. There is also a striking difference between women holding chief or CEO positions in private companies where women hold only 30%. With this being said, you can see there is definitely room for improvement. And the improvement can only start if we recognize the benefits that come with having an equal representation. Research has showed how companies with strong female leadership on their boards have a return on equity that is 10% annually versus only 17% from companies without. In China, just over 9% of directors in listed companies are women, according to Deloitte. Gender equality is a process over time. As I have tried to say in a very short version today, gender equality is not something that happens overnight. It takes a lot of changes in policy, actions, and a will to change. It also takes something that is much harder to change, a mindset. A mindset of gender equality when it comes to parenting, in the workplace, and in our personal life. I have showed you one way of enhancing gender equality, the Swedish way. You have to find your way, the Chinese way, and maybe, maybe you could do that with some Swedish characteristics. Thank you.